Hey guys, Jaybird here, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial, an introduction tutorial to the effects editor. So this is actually now incorporated into Radiant. Before it was its own separate program in World at War and Call of Duty 4 and Black Ops 1. And it was completely separate from uh, the actual Radiant program, but now it's actually incorporated into it. And now that they have the actual in-game rendering in Radiant, you can actually see what your effects look like in-game before you even have to compile. So today we're just going to be running through the actual interface for the effects editor. We're not going to be going into too much detail yet. Uh, that will be in a later tutorial and we'll show you guys how to actually create specific effects. So in this one we'll just be running through the three main windows that we're going to be dealing with here. So the first one's going to be the effects outliner. Uh, which is actually going to just show off all the different uh, elements of your effect. Uh, and then we're going to be jumping into the effects properties, which will allow you to select different uh, elements of your effect and then go in and change up like the size, the motion, the color, the, the, alpha, the alpha channel of it, like the spawn rate, everything about it. And then we're also going to uh, go into the effects graph, which is where you can tweak those settings. All right, guys, let's jump in it. All right, guys, so we're here in our old test map. All right, so we're going to be jumping into trying to show you guys how to set up to edit effects. So the way that you're going to want to do that, and you'll notice I kind of have my setup, typical setup where I got my window here. We're going to be playing around with this to kind of set it up so we can do some effects editing. So I've got the effects browser open already, so I went and did the effects browser to get that here. Um, and then so the three things that we're going to be going over, like I said before, are going to be first off the effects outliner. So we'll go and open that guy up. So this right now is empty because I don't have any effects in the map. Uh, so you'll see if I just drag an effect on, we can see what the effect is. And you can put like a bunch of effects and you can actually see them all pop up in here. You can close them down. You can hide them so you can't see them in the view anymore. You can select them individually and then you can also delete them and play around with them. So we'll just leave the fire effects in there for now. So you can see we've got a whole bunch of elements here and actually actually I can go through and hide different elements of the effect so you can see the flames kind of disappearing now all I got is the distortion of the uh, the fire there and I'm actually surprised they don't have any smoke on this. I guess that's what the distortion is supposed to be. Uh, but yeah so you can kind of go through hide all this you can see there's some more settings back here. Uh, it'll tell you some of the different uh, details about it, but we'll go into that stuff in the next uh, window here. So that's just the outliner. This is kind of a good idea for when you want to just hide different elements of your effects or even to create a new element of your effect, which I'll show you really quickly here. You can just click add element. It'll create a blank one here. You can also delete them. And that's basically all you need to know about the effects outliner. We'll go into the actual editing of the elements in a second here. So next up we have the effects properties. So this one here is where you're going to actually do all the changes to your actual effect. So let's say for instance, you're, you'll notice it's all grayed out here even though I have an effect selected. You're going to want to select an actual element because this is what this is doing. The effects property uh, does the properties of each element of an effect, not the actual effect itself. So we're editing this first one, zero fire licks two. So you'll notice we got the name here. We could change the name to whatever we want. And it'll show up here. So we'll kind of do a brief run through what's going on here really, really quick. I'm not going over anything specific or anything in detail here. One shot looping. This is like, is it going to happen once? Is it going to happen multiple times? Uh, iterations, you know, how many times it's going to go through if it is looping. Uh, interval is how many milliseconds before it does the next one if it is looping. Delay is how long uh, after the initial uh, point does it happen. This could be anywhere between 0 and 100 milliseconds that the effects happens. The life is how long does the effect last for. This can be anywhere between 500 and 600 milliseconds. You can always change any of these settings. And I know I'm going a bit quick here, but there's a lot to go over. So I'm going to just expand this a little bit. Origins where it's going to spawn. So initially we're going to have 0, 0, 0, which will be exactly where this point is here. If I do a uh, huge negative value here, you'll see over here somewhere it's going in between 7.5 and negative 1000. So anywhere along here is where it's going now. So you can see since it's on a loop, it's going to go anywhere 
between the values here and here, anywhere between negative 7.5 and 7.5, anywhere between 0 and 10. So that's basically your range for where that effect is going to spawn. Um, optimization, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but this is just for like uh, things like how far away the effect will play before you can see it, or how close it'll play before you can see it. Um, this is more to do with multiplayer stuff, friendly foe, stuff like that. Uh, water, can it be seen underwater? Is it uh, over water only? So the effect will actually kill once you go under the water. Uh, so let's move on to the movement now. So this is where you can get actual um, movement into your effects as well as the scale. So a lot of people have been asking me, how do you change the scale of an effect? That'll be under the movement tab. So we have world, effect at world, uh, or effect at spawn, effect now, spawn offset, and spawn offset now. So a lot of these are specific to whatever you're trying to do. I'm not gonna go into detail what each one does, but effect now tends to be uh, relevant to the position that it was spawned at. Effect war or like a world effect will be specific to the world's offset. So it's kind of the positioning based on whatever you're selecting there. Inherent parent movement. So this is interesting. This one's good for if you're spawning effects through script on an entity. So inherent parent movement Let's say, for instance, that you're doing this on a, you're playing an, a, a glowing eye effect on a zombie. If you had this checked, it's going to follow the eye position that it spawned at of the player or of the zombie's eye tag. So that's good for script-related stuff. Um, velocity, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but you know we got some values here. And what I'm going to do really quickly is just bring up the effects graph, which is the last window that we were talking about. So I have it right here. You know, snap it to wherever you want. Um, so you'll see we have some values here, kind of hard to read because they're a bit smaller. So you can see velocity, rotation, color, alpha, a whole bunch of stuff here, but realistically it's all over here too. So like if I select different things over here, you can see on the graph, okay, so we're dealing with velocity in the x-axis, that's the white one that's highlighted right now. If I do y, you can see it's right on here, and z is the one that's going up like this. You can know select stuff drag it around this is all with left click right now um, and specifically if I s selected the x-axis here I can s just box select it and it'll only select the X stuff so then you just drag all this around if you want to create a new point you can just middle mouse click it'll create a new point for you you can drag that around you can also select a point and hit the backspace key and that will delete it so you can get rid of a whole bunch of points if you don't want it to be that smooth so that's basically all you need to know about the effects graph. A lot of the settings that are in here are going to be in the effects graph here, but you can just select whichever one you want to deal with. Let's say for instance color, I wanted this to be more green for some reason. So you can just bring down the red and bring up the green, you know, play around with the settings, whatever you're dealing with. Okay, gravity, kind of self-explanatory. This is just going to be the amount of acceleration on your effect. That could be good for some rain or some snow effects, especially with the wind. Uh, if you have, if you're using a weather grime volume in your map, which we'll probably go over in another tutorial, uh, you can actually set up the wind so that way your effects actually are affected by that. And this is where you would do it here. So the wind setting, magnitude, life, and interval. Okay, so now we're on to size. So this is the one that a lot of people wanted to know about because they want to make, let's say, you have this fire effect and you want it to be huge. So you want to go and select whatever element you're dealing with, and we're probably going to want to scale up all of these. So what we're going to do is go through one by one. Uh, this is the width and the height. You'll notice that we have one and two. So these are the gra different graphs. So it'll pick randomly between one and two. So one is up here and two is down here. So it could be this high or it could be this high. So this is the size. So it's uh, one being the very top, meaning 17 times one, or it could be zero. Basically, your value can be in between one and zero which basically represents a ratio of 0 to 17. And the same goes for the height. But you'll notice this one's grayed out. And actually, this is actually a bug that I noticed with this uh, effect. You can't have graph 2 and not have graph 1. So whoever, Treyarch, whoever made this effect, they messed up. Uh, if you want to ungray this, you can middle mouse it. And you can also gray ones out by uh, middle mousing as well. So we'll select 1 and you can see we have this one here. So same idea, this is for height, 
a lot of times what uh, effects have is their width is the only one uh, that's highlighted and the height is not the height will then automatically adjust to whatever the width is unless you have a height selected so then now if I change this value to say 170 you can see since I have the height selected there it's gonna actually do a height of 25 and a width of 170 but if I get uncheck that it'll automatically adjust the height to the width so we have 170 and that's you know scaled up since this is a supposed to be an effect that's supposed to be smaller the image that's using is very pixelated and it looks pretty bad when you scale it up so that's kind of how you adjust the effects there and like say you wanted it to scale up over time you just kind of go into your graph here and adjust that we'll just make this like 170 again and let's say 250 and you can see it's kind of like it's going really quick because the the, the loop time on it but you can see it's kind of warping up if we change the the lifespan on this to like a bit higher you can see it's it starts off small and starts warping up a bit more let's try to adjust the intervals so you can see it a bit better there we go so it's small and it gets larger so you know you can play around with the settings there so that's kind of the size rotations kind of similar we've got a one and two graph that'll uh, choose randomly between and so one is going to be uh, uh, like we have one and negative one and these are going to be for your rotation uh, it's based in degrees not radians so uh, initial rotation is going to be at a negative 15 degrees so it's going to be starting to rotate uh, you know counterclockwise but then it's going to eventually move towards a uh, clockwise rotation and this is going to be the amount of rotation that's doing so let's say for instance we bump this up to uh, 250 can see it's rotating a bit more so keep in mind that these are the angles and this is the amount that it's going to be rotating at. so zero would mean not rotating at all so there we go um, we're not going to be going too much into the physics stuff this is very good for rain you could have a particle and have it kill on impact and then play another effect so that's good for the rain hitting the ground and then playing a splash effect you know we're not going to go too much into that uh, visuals so there's a whole bunch of different effects you can do. You can do billboard sprites, which are ones that will rotate towards the way that you're facing. So if I keep rotating around this, this is just a 2D image, but it'll face me wherever I go. And then if I changed it to an oriented sprite, here, let's go ahead and hide the other ones so you can actually see what I'm talking about here. We have this oriented sprite, which is always facing the direction that you tell it to. So if I switch it back to the billboard sprite it will rotate with me uh, we have a whole bunch of different ones rotated sprites are ones that you can actually tell to rotate tails are usually good for trail effects uh, same with line uh, geometry trail I haven't played too much with that one particle clouds are good for rain and snow uh, a model is literally a model you can actually scale up models in this and whatnot but now that we can do that through script that's not too much needed there uh, lights uh, very very detailed stuff here so probably a later tutorial for that stuff but you can create light effects in here uh, sounds I've never actually attempted to do a sound in an effect but I've seen some steam sound or steam effects that have sounds and spark effects that have sounds so I'm assuming they use this dynamic sound one as well lens flares good for lights uh, decal this is good for anything that you want to have on a surface so let's say you had an oil spill that was just growing in size this would probably be a good one to have effects runner haven't played with that one and beam stuff that's very new to this but this is good for uh, like an arcing laser or anything like that very good beam like stuff that was done Deriz or no Deriz, um what was that one called Derizendruck had that trap at the top and it had the laser effects arcing from uh, or not the laser, electricity effects arcing from the spheres to the zombies. So that would have been a beam effect. So there we go. That's going to be our little run through of this. We're not going to be going too much into detail, like I said. So I hope you guys all enjoyed. Uh, you can look at existing effects to get ideas of what to do, but eventually we'll be running through how to actually make some effects. I hope you guys all enjoyed watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.